All right, welcome back. So in the last video, we were talking about how do we classify fluids based on macroscopic systems, right? And as a refresher, we're not looking at individual molecules and how they behave, but rather a collection of molecules and how they behave in some sort of state or um, more specifically some sort of container or space. And when we were talking about that, we got to the concept of volume, right? We were comparing milk and water and we obviously know those are two different types of fluids and even though we can have one liter of milk and one liter of water that doesn't make those two liquids the same right even though they have the same volume they have different masses and so in this video I want to really try to get to the core concept of the relationship with between mass and volume so at the very end of the last video we kind of touched on this concept of mass density, right? We can't strictly compare fluids based on just their volume, but we also need to look at the mass of each substance. So volume, right, volume really just characterizes macroscopic systems and, and substances in those systems, right? So if we took a box now, I'm not an artist, so this is probably going to be a very badly drawn box, but bear with me. Say we had this box or this container, right? And this box was 10 centimeters wide. It was 10 centimeters deep and it was 10 centimeters tall, right? So the volume of this box would really just be the width times its depth times its height, right? So it would be 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters, right? Uh, pretty easy calculation. 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000, right? And we took this unit of centimeters, which were in length, and now we have centimeters times centimeters times centimeters, so that's centimeters cubed, right? So the volume of this box is 1,000 centimeters cubed. Now, why is volume important, right? Why is calculating the volume of this space important? Well, volume tells us how much space a system or a substance takes us, but it tells us very little about what that substance actually is. So if we had one liter of milk here, right? This is one liter of milk, and then next to it we had one liter of water, right? These two volumes are the same, and sorry if this looks a little bit bigger than this, uh, just know that each one is one liter. We know that milk and water are not the same, right? In fact, milk is actually just a little bit more heavier than water or more dense, and therefore we can safely assume that both milk and water have different masses, right? There's probably a little bit more mass in one liter of milk than there is in one liter of water. Now, if we took the mass of milk and the mass of water and we divided it by their respective volumes, we would actually get two different answers, right? So if we took the mass of one liquid or fluid and we divided it by the volume that it takes up, we get something that's known as, this is the Greek character rho, this is known as mass density. And more specifically, mass density is really just the mass per unit of volume. And this is important, right? How much mass is there being taken up in a single unit of volume? Well, what is this unit of volume? So to illustrate that, um, this, so if we just took a look at water, right? Water has generally a mass density of 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Or if I rewrote this, right, this would be 1,000 kilograms of mass per one cubic meter of space. And this right here is really what we refer to as a unit of volume, right? So if we're measuring something in meters, a unit volume of meters would be one meter cubed, right? 
or if we were measuring in centimeters, that would be one centimeter cubed, or if we were measuring in miles, that would be one mile cubed. But the important concept here is that whatever unit of length that you are measuring in, you are measuring that 3D space, a single cubic measurement of that length is what we refer to as a single unit of volume. So going back to mass density, mass density is really how much mass is there per unit of volume, in this case per meter cubed. And that really is the basic concept of mass density, right? So if we know that milk has a higher mass than water, we can take the mass of milk, divide it by one liter, and we'll notice that the mass density we get for milk is slightly higher than the mass density that we get for water. All right, so now that we understand what this concept of mass density is, we're gonna do a few examples in the next few videos to really understand this relationship and get more of a practical sense to this equation. All right, see you then.